is the bad news is that these HPV related throat cancers are growing in incidence in the country. The good news that goes along with it is they tend to be very curable, especially among patients who have never smoked or seldom smoked. HPV related throat cancers have a 90-95% overall survival rate. So the bad news is we have more of these cancers, but the good news is that these cancers are curable. From our perspective though, there's a second piece of bad news that goes along with that. And that's even though our cures for these cancers are quite good right now, again, especially if patients don't smoke and the disease hasn't spread outside of the neck, um, the bad news is about one in three of these patients after standard treatment will have some significant long-term effects from treatment. These include things such as dry mouth, problems with painful swallowing, problems in swallowing more solid objects, nerve pain, or stiffness inside their neck. So even though these patients are being cured, a significant proportion of these patients have long-term side effects because of their treatment. And because they are relatively young, maybe their 40s and 50s in the so-called prime of their lives, that means they might have to live with these side effects for the rest of their lives. That's right, because these patients are relatively young and because we are curing them, essentially, of these diseases, um, they will have to live with these side effects for a very long time. And that's been one of my focuses of research. We are trying to develop a new way of treating these HPV-positive, non-smoking patients in a way that cures them of their disease, but also in a way that reduces the long-term side effects that they have for the future. Tell me about the trial. So the traditional way for treating patients is either with seven weeks of radiation therapy plus chemotherapy or six weeks of radiation following surgery, adding chemotherapy after surgery if the patient has certain risk factors. So that's the traditional way of treating, seven weeks of chemo radiation or six weeks of radiation plus minus chemo after surgery. The idea of our clinical trial is we'd combine several different techniques together try to reduce the toxicity of each treatment so that the sum of the treatment has less toxicity than giving an intense course of radiation or intense course of surgery. So this trial would combine minimally invasive surgical techniques uh, here available here in Mayo Clinic with a short course of radiation therapy, two weeks of twice daily radiation rather than six weeks of daily radiation treatment and at the same time that the patients are getting their two weeks of twice daily radiation, they'd get a low dose of chemotherapy as well. So by combining the strengths of each one of these different treatment modalities, we're hoping to have a final treatment that has high cure but still has low side effects. So who is eligible? Because I would think that some of the patients, they, they want to make sure they get the, the strong enough treatment um, how, how do you select who's eligible? So that's a great question. So the first, um, um, of course, the most important factor is you have HPV-positive related disease uh, that has not spread outside of the neck, so non-metastatic disease. Uh, the second criteria is that we want patients who are never smokers or are very seldom smokers. In clinical terms, patients with less than a 10-pack year smoking history prior trials have demonstrated that the difference between patients who smoked a lot and patients who have smoked a little before is that the patients who have smoked a lot accumulate much more mutations inside their tumors and are thus more treatment resistant. The patients who are HPV positive who have not smoked as much before or preferably never smoked at all are more sensitive to treatment because they've accumulated less mutations. So timing's really tricky here. You get your diagnosis and you have to start treatment right away. What, how does the patient proceed? So usually the way the patient would proceed is um, they get their diagnosis, they'd come here to the clinic, um, they get surgery, and they'd see a radiation oncology either before a radiation oncologist either before surgery or immediately after surgery we'd set them up for a consultation to get treatment planning for radiation, usually two weeks after surgery, and we can usually start them in their two weeks of radiation therapy within three to four weeks after surgery. Okay, so they do already have to be having their surgery here at Mayo? They don't necessarily need to have their surgery here at Mayo Clinic. They can have surgery on the outside, 
but um, there is a window after their surgery that we would like to have them seen by radiation oncology in order to begin their treatment within a certain window. And how soon after they get their diagnosis, though, would they have to contact you to see if they meet all of these requirements? So there's, cert there's three sets of requirements, actually. The first two I've talked about. The last set of requirements are risk factors after surgery. We're looking for patients that don't essentially have any gross tumor left behind. So they can't have what we call positive margins, meaning after surgery there's a little bit of tumor left behind. And they can't have what we call extracapsular extension, meaning tumor sticking out of lymph nodes. So if patients have what we call intermediate risk factors after surgery, these are patients who are eligible for the trial. So HPV positive, non-smokers with intermediate risk factors after surgery. So ideally, the patient has to know about this trial before they even go into surgery, and then after surgery, see what their situation is, and then keep going. Yes, ma'am. So it's sometimes uh, it's difficult to predict what the risk factors are going to be after surgery. Um, Extracapsular extension sometimes is difficult to assess from imaging alone. So we can't guarantee that patients will be candidates for the trial at the get-go. Um, though generally for some of the other risk factors, we can try to determine those at the time of surgery or even before surgery as well. Okay. And lastly, just you must be hopeful. I think, I mean, this is a great thing because I saw my husband go through the heavy duty seven weeks of yeah. radiation and chemo and it takes you, one doctor said, it takes you down where it kills everything just before it kills you. Right. It's tough. It's very, so we've treated, uh, we've treated several patients on this protocol already, and the short-term side effects for these patients have been much less than what I'm used to with traditional patients. Um, many of our traditional patients end up requiring a feeding tube, for example, a tube inside their stomach because it just hurts so much to swallow. We haven't had that issue yet with our patients, and most of our patients develop a mild reaction as we would want them to have, but nothing so severe that uh, has required a lot of additional support like we've seen in our traditional patients. We're hopeful for this trial. This is a clinical trial, so this is investigational, uh, which means we're testing this to see if this is effective. But uh, we think we have a strong scientific rationale for the study, and we're hopeful that this will really impact patients' quality of life. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.